Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us here at the Life Insurance Academy. We got a special treat for you today. Just a few weeks back, I had this special privilege and honor of being interviewed by Cody Askins on his channel about how I got started in the business, about my trajectory, what I see in the business. And uh, we covered a lot of great content. I thought it was super valuable. They have given us permission to actually drop it here. We're excited to be able to get this video to you. So coming up is that full interview with Mr. 8% himself. Uh, listen in. And uh, if you got some comments or questions after, we'd love to hear them in the chat. But listen in and enjoy. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. Today's guest, I'm going to set it up right today, okay? I'm, I'm going to give you some, like, a clue as Dylan is shooting me. I'm going to give you a clue who we're interviewing today. Incredible freaking guest. A buddy of mine, industry, like, freak, okay? That's doing a lot of stuff, man. Creator of the Life Insurance Academy and Life Insurance Academy podcast, which is booming. Number one life insurance podcast in the world, maybe insurance podcast in the world from Louisville, Kentucky. Chief um, visionary officer of Impact Legacy Group, right, with my father, Brian Askins, an amazing company helping to thousands of agents right now. Mentor on the Ultimate Agent Contest season one and coming back for season two very soon. Spoke at three 8% conferences and is going to tell his story about how there was one year, man, he wrote 137400 bucks by the third week of May. Please welcome back to the channel, Roger Short. <laughs> I like how you slid that in there, 137400 by the third week of May. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks for having me, man. Dude, thanks I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate being here. It's good to have you in Springfield. You're actually going to be in Springfield like three, three, like three weeks out of a month. This month, yeah. This month, March yeah. 2023, yeah. right? Which is crazy. You, you've created a mecca. Dude. What's going on, And I man? keep inviting you to What's stuff, What's going right? on? You keep inviting me to I know, stuff? man. And, it's like a no direct flights in here, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always worth the trip. Dude, it's I, lo worth the trip, I love man. you being here. We always have a blast together. Yeah. This is a good dude, man. When I say that, I really mean it. Um, yeah, also, um, husband, father of three awesome girls, uh, women. They're freaking yeah, growing they're old now, now man, man yeah. right? Um, pickleball player. Yeah. Um, speaker. What do you not do? Let's, maybe we should start there, you know? Oh, there's a lot that I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. Golfer, yeah, golfer. golfer. I used yeah. to be golfer. I was, I was yeah. messing with my, my time in uh, on the my time in uh, playing golf right now has been limited. Yeah, so. yeah. Me yeah. and you both so busy, yeah. man. Well, dude, you've got an incredible resume. You've accomplished a lot. You're doing a lot. You're helping a ton of agents. Um, the life insurance piece, like, what? Why? Why life insurance? You know, like a lot of it, you could sell anything. Well, I've always had a bent towards sales. I think yep. once I realized I was a good communicator and then I could figure out how to listen to people's, you know, uh, situations and help, uh, help formulate a way to help solve their problems, then you yeah. can really apply that to anything. True. And, and, and you are helping agents with Medicare and, you know, health and annuities and that kind of stuff now, but life yeah. has always been a core. Yeah. It, well, it's, it's how we got started. It yeah. still is with the Life Insurance Academy podcast True. and all the training there. It's, it's all based on life sales, whether it be annuities or you know, mortgage protection or final expense, whatever. I mean, that that's right. that's the base of, of, of the whole platform, really. But uh, I got into the business because I had an interest in financial services. Mm. My oldest brother, who is now 71 <laughs> wow. in Canada, and he still works every day. And Roger's his, not 71, his, no, in case no, you're wondering. Not yet. Um, my oldest brother, there's a big range in our family. I'm the youngest of nine children. So. Yeah, my oldest he's, sister he's, is 19 years older than me. He's got you by like two decades, right? Ish. Uh, almost. Yeah. yeah. I'm in my fifties. Yeah. He's 71. So yeah. you know, he just yeah. Like 50s. Yeah. It's good. Um, and, uh, so he's been a, in the financial services business for most of his life. His son mm -hmm. works with him. They have a small office in a small town, but they manage a very large book of business for, um, a really good clientele and he's been serving them for years. So yes, whenever we were going through change or anything, I kind of always gravitated back. Like that's a great way to help people with their finances. I mean, who doesn't need help with financial planning, money, making sure like who's teaching that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, financial literacy is not being taught anywhere. It's not being taught in high school, Just, elementary school, college, yeah. nowhere. And so I always, I always had a bent towards that. And so when yep. I was here in the U.S., obviously I was transitioning out of another business that I came here to start in the in the Yellow Page business. But I went looking for something else. Mm. 
and I started investigating insurance. And then I found out about this thing called final expense, and I had no clue what that was. Yeah. What do you think it was no when clue. you hear the words final expense? I, I, I didn't <laughs> even know so, it was insurance at first. Sounds so like it's so, final. It was, like, like, it was it morbid. <laughs> it, to me, yeah. initially, it was morbid. I was like, what is that? Yeah. And uh, then I found out there was this market that, you know, with the baby boomers, all these people turn to 65. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people in that middle to low income group didn't have proper planning in place, didn't yeah. have their finances in order because nobody taught them financial literacy. Now they need some help with, yes. you know, end of life planning and costs and things like that. And um, so we we decided I decided to look into it and I found out there was a huge market. There was a huge market in the final expense space. <laughs> As I'm shooting on my Instagram know, story doing this for those listening to audio. That's right? right. That's right. And so um, I, I investigated it and I realized just people, there's a lot of people in like middle America and low income families that need someone to help them. And a lot of these people were marginalized. True. Um, when I, I came from a big family, so I had a lot of older aunts and uncles, you know, my grandparents. So like I, I, I related to it. I related to it and I'm like, I could yep. do that. And so I found a guy that was, uh, lived across found the, the uh, yeah, I found out a guy that was selling this <laughs> across the river in Southern Indiana. It wasn't drugs, this is life insurance. His name okay. was Fred and I found out that he lived on a uh, Fuzzy Zellers golf course over in Southern Indiana hmm. and um, you know was very well to do and he was selling final expense. So I called him up and I said, hey, my name is and I'd like to come see what you do. And he goes, sure, let's set it up. So uh, like two How'd or How'd you hear this guy? Uh, I just, I networked, I found him. I networked and found him through someone that I was working with currently at the time in my own company. Okay. And um, he, um, I made arrangements and I went over and I rode along with him for two days. Mm. I just got in his car. He drove a beautiful Corvette, lived on a golf course on hole like number 12 or 13 on, on Covered Ridge Golf Course in he, Southern Indiana. He, and he we pulled an old Malibu out with two doors and that's what we drove okay, all day. Say he didn't drag the, take the no, Corvette to the no, final expense no, moments. No, no. I, I, tr I tried to do that with like a Cadillac CTS <laughs> uh, coupe one time yeah. and it didn't go so well. Yeah. yeah. So we got in the Malibu, you know, you kind of got to lift the door to shut it because yeah. the doors were so heavy, two doors. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was like a yellow beige. I mean, it was oh, not impressive perfect, at all. Perfect. And uh, we went to Quizno Sub. He knew everybody in there. It's like he did his same routine every day, 10.30, 11 o'clock, go in and get his, you remember Quizno's? Oh, yeah, yeah. Quizno Sub, the grilled subs. And uh, then we left and we were just driving around. And I was like, well, who do you have appointments with? He said, I don't have any. And he pulled out these pink cards that said, supplement your government benefit for, with of $255. Mm. There was not one bit of language on there about life insurance. It was just about taking care of final expenses. And we were just going and knocking on doors. We were going, we covered four counties that day. He called it a cleanup week. I was like, what is that? Wow. He said, well, I do this mail. And af after about four, six, eight weeks, I have all these leads that I never got to. He said, I put them all together and then I run those. I called my cleanup week. And he said, that's where you're going with me this week. That's cool. I was literally getting nauseous driving these back roads through Indiana. And yeah. Um, by the end of the day, we had helped a, a family. Uh, there was there was one family whose husband, whose wife had passed away the year before. Um, lived in a beautiful mobile home, and it was all decorated, nice potted flowers on the thing, and you know, nice little side deck built on it. It was beautiful. Yeah. We went into that house and sat down, and uh, the obituary for his wife was sitting over here on the on the table, laminated. Mm. And Fred was here, and uh, Mr. Williamson was here. And I was just observing and I could see the obituary. Nobody ever mentioned the obituary the entire time. Fred just helped him with uh, help finally asked why he needed something. He goes, well, my son said, you know, my, uh, you know, we're still paying for mom's funeral. Mm. And uh, he said, dad, if something happens to you, we're, we, we're going to we're going to be in a tough spot. He said, so I need some coverage. And so Fred helped him out. We we're only there for like 45 minutes. Fred is very matter of fact, got up. Well, thank you, Mr. Williamson, shook his hand. And when he shook his hand, Mr. Williamson pulled him in close and put his arm around him like that and said, thank you for helping me. Mm. And when he did, I could see like a tear in his eye and it got me, it just hit me right there. Boom, mm. I just got emotional for a moment. I got yeah. this soft spot and like it all connected, crazy. man. It all connected and I was like, that made a difference in that man's life. And then we drove around for two more hours and it was like nothing. And I was thinking, well, that was a good experience, but this driving around stuff's for the birds. You like, the, yeah. there's gotta be a way to systemize this. Well, that evening we strolled in on another couple and he ended up selling a policy to the husband and wife. So we wrote three applications that day for like 2,800 wow. that day. And we go home and Fred drops me off at like 940 at his house. It was just getting dark in uh, late summer or, or late at summer night? at night. Yeah. What time did you leave? We left at 1030 in the morning. 
Okay. Yeah. So he didn't start too early door knocking wise. No, I went, I'm, I met with him at nine. And from, so from nine to 1030, we just talked about stuff in his office there on the golf course. And then you were driving and then we were just for driving around 11 hours, for 11 whatever. hours. Yeah. 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 And uh, $2,800. Well, I went and did the same thing again the next day. Exact same routine. Like repeat. It was like. Quiznos too? Is this, yeah. Exact same Shut routine. Up. Same sandwich. Did he order the same thing? It was like freaking Groundhog Day. It's all over sandwich. again. And um, did the exact same thing. And he had his same routine every time. He didn't even have a presentation. He just used like the American Amicable brochure. That's what he sold out of. Got it. And uh, by the end of that second day, he had written like $4,300 in premium in two days. So I get home again at 940 and then I have to drive 40 minutes to my house over in Kentucky. I get home. My wife said, what do you think? She said, where have you been? <laughs> I said, just visiting people like old people. That's what we've been doing. She said, like appointments? I said, no, no appointments. It's really odd. Like, cause my business, like we set appointments Monday. I B2B. Mean, yeah. Business Previously, to business. Yeah. And we were, we had a, a bullpen and all the reps were in there and mm. we set 20, 25 appointments for the week. And then Tuesday through Friday, we were out seeing business owners, you know, and Everyone's dressed up. Here we're like wearing khakis and a polo and a thing around your neck and knocking yeah. on people's doors. And that's just that's just how it did it. But she said, is there money in this? Or I mean, is there a legitimate? I, and I did the commissions. And at that at that point, I think it was like an 85% contract or whatever. Sure. Uh, and I, I did it's the commissions. what you would have been on, right, at that point? Yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I looked at the commissions. I said, yeah, you can make a good living in this. I said, if you had a way to systemize this, you could scale this into a good company. Yeah. So that was the start. I didn't start mm. then. It was several months later before I ever yeah. got around and got my license. But that opened the door to an opportunity and that stuck with me. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing it make like four grand in like two days, you know? Yes. And the, what, what for you could have been very close to that, you know, over the course of the whole year, you know? Yeah, like well, I, that was just two days. I'm like, well. Yeah. How many days did he do that? Four? Four days a week. Four days. And he just didn't work the other three? Or? Oh, he did Monday to Thursday. Did he have an admin day or he... Uh, he does admin on Thursday uh, afternoon, and he played golf on Friday. That was it. Wow. That did he submit the, the Monday apps on Thursday or on no, Monday? No, he submitted them that night. That night. Yeah. Actually, played, played actually, no, no. He submitted them in the mornings. So between 8.30 and 10 in the mornings, that's when he would submit all of his business, and then he'd go back out again. That's so, so that, cool. that's just what I saw. No appointments. Yeah. Weird leads. These mailers. I didn't know where they came from. Like, I was just trying to figure it all yeah. out, man. That's, does that still work today? 2023 direct mail leads? post COVID, not just direct mail, but like the well, exactly what he did. A hundred percent. Yeah, that actually still works. Yes, it really does. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still works. There's people producing at a high level doing that. And it's what do you think about like I want to I want to interject back into your story and like continue where you took it from you know Fred and sort of doing your own thing. But there's a lot of agents that um you know they they they, they see that or they think about like leads and phone calls and booking appointments and it can kind of be. It, that can work too, but can be more overwhelming. And so there's some people that are like, man, I'm scared to death of the phone. They can just get leads and door knock. Yeah. You know, it's like an alternative solution and idea. I mean, helping people in succeeding and making money is more important than the way that you do it. A hundred percent. I think a lot of people put, they put, um, throttles like they put governors you know like when you're riding a golf cart and you're trying to go fast and it won't uh, it only down. goes so Especially fast when you're going down a hill yeah, and, and it like, starts I'm slowing like, down automatically you can't go fast yeah i think we as people our nature is to put governors on opportunities True. because we'll see the stop sign first before we see the green light mm. like we're looking at the things that can stop us from having success that can prevent us from having success yeah. is that difficult can i do it can i fit it in what about work-life balance how's this going to work in transition am i going to lose money am I, what am i risking like yeah. i mean we're bent i mean human psychology has a bent towards a bias towards a negative right and we, why is that I think it's I think it's I think it's human nature. We yeah. we uh, one of the one of the biases is towards uh, why things won't work as opposed to why things will. Mm. And I think there's a difference between the people who say I can find a way to make things work. Yeah. Most other people will follow the masses, and they take advices from them. They take advice and direction from the masses, whether directly or indirectly, by either observing, yeah. or copying, or direct advice. And they don't ever put themselves into the room or in the mindset of people who th who think I see opportunity first. Mm -hmm. You know, Simon Sinek was uh, running a uh, who wrote the book uh, Start with Why. Yep. Um, a famous writer, speaker, he speaks all over. Phenomenal too. Um, he and a buddy of his were running a um, mini marathon, I believe it was, and it might it might have been in New York. I, I don't quote me on where it was, but he he tells a story about when they finished, uh, his friend had to be somewhere else, 
And whenever you finish one of those half marathons, I've run like five or six of those when I was in my 30s and my wife and I used to run a bunch of these. And whenever you finish, there's like these big long tables with like bagels and sometimes bananas and oranges and water. And then if you're at one sponsored by like Michelob, there's a whole beer tent. You can go get a beer, you know, at the end. That's the going. Yeah. And so... um, they came up to the end and Simon Sinek was like, hey man, they got bagels. And his friends was like, well, look at the line. And there was a big line going up there. And he goes, man, we gotta go. And he goes, dude, bagels. He goes, Simon, the line. And anyway, he turned and his friend kept walking and he turned and he went back over to the table. We looked at this big line. It was a big wide table like this one. And over here were the bagels that, you know, the, the regular bagels inside were the bagels everyone wanted. And then the line was coming and reaching in here. Well, he just walked up to the side of the table. He didn't butt it in. He didn't cut anyone off. And he just reached in and took one of the regular bagels and walked away. And he walked back over to his friend and his friend said, dude, did you cut line? He goes, no, I didn't cut line. I just went around the other side and grabbed one of the regular bagels. I didn't, I didn't interrupt anybody. I just went and got what I wanted. Mm. He said, dude, why you always do stuff like that? He goes, because you always see the line and I see the bagels. Mm. So like a lot of us will see the stop signs. We have the bent to a bias towards the negative of why things won't work. And then we put governors on our opportunities as opposed yes. to saying, how can it work? Okay, if there's an idea or concept there that can work, yeah. how can I then put my brain power behind it, maybe collaborate with some other people and figure out a system where I can make it work for me? That's good. Do you think and our past impact because you always say say me like um like life hasn't like knocked me down as much as others and so i naturally do just freaking try anything right um but i do think our past will determine how we see an opportunity yeah and i think people respond differently to that you know i think some people get the crap kicked out of them and have opportunities Mm -hmm. to and they have to fight for everything correct and then they have this big hard resilient and overcoming success story and it's very inspiring right yes. but so many people never make it out from under there you never hear about their stories because yeah. they never surface sadly some of them you know lose their life through depression and all kinds of things that that can happen True. abuse and you know there's just so many things and then there's other people who have opportunities provided for them mm-hmm. that take for granted mm. what they have and they still don't they still don't take advantage of opportunities because they've always had it easy. Yeah. I think it's people who will will look at life and see the go the, the green light versus the red light. I think the people who see green green for go rather than red for stop is the people who will find a way forward no matter what adversity you have to overcome. True. And I mean, you've had a great relationship with your father. Your, yeah. your dad's been successful in business. Totally. But one of the things you've always had that you've had to, to, to fight through is you were almost fighting vicariously for your father in some, in, in some ways. Mm-hmm. Would you say that? I would agree with that. You were, you were like fighting for him mm-hmm. because you saw something, an injustice that was done to him and to your family. Yep. And it was personal. It hurt him mm-hmm. because he was successful in business and then that opportunity was taken away from him and he had to start over. Correct. And you're like that I'm, I, we will make this name known, mm-hmm. right? And so you did have a chip on your shoulder. It didn't happen to you directly, but a, an adversity happened to your family and you stood in there and fought with your family to succeed. And Correct. so I think we all have those things, but some people will look at the red for stop and lay down. Yeah. And other people look, just say, hey, if there's an idea, if there's a way forward, I can figure out how to do it. Let's figure it out. So when I saw that final expense opportunity, man, I was like, yeah. There's, I mean, we're just driving around. What if you set appointments? What if you got on a really consistent lead program? What if you hired 10 agents and put them on a platform and get them in a bullpen and do a call center? And my brain was just like firing. But Fred didn't do any of that, really. No, yeah. no, no, no. Just played golf, lived on a golf course. Yeah, but he did recruit. He he, he did recruit hundred. some people. Okay. Yeah, he did okay. recruit some people. Well, I guess you're, he, do you recruit, do you, recruit you? Yeah, he quit. He quit on me. Shut up. As, yeah, he quit. So he's not an interest with us now. I don't think so. You probably won't even watch that. No, no. Come on, Fred. What are you doing, He bro? could have still been making money. We could have still been making money together. True. Yeah. That was a bad decision to quit on me. So, yeah, <laughs> very bad. He'd have made a lot of money by now. So, so what, yeah. um, gosh dang, you guys enjoying this, right? <laughs> Let me know in the comments, man, how much you love this dude, Roger Short. Um, okay, so then you jump in yeah. and you start selling. Talk through that. Um, well, back then, um, I just wanted to get in front of people. I knew I didn't know anything. And one thing that you'll learn when you get in the business for the first time is you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't have. Which is a better <laughs> attitude to say, like, I don't know anything than I freaking know everything. 
Yeah. You know? Well, I think a lot of us will come into things and say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to take all of this and apply it here and I'll be successful rather than just coming in like with a clean slate and say, fail as fast as I can figure this stuff out. Amen. And so this, this concept, I don't know what I don't know. Therefore I don't have like that, a very successful businessman when I was in my twenties said that to me one time yeah. and it stuck. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know. That's why you don't have. It was like, that is the most basic thought process ever. Yeah. Okay. Like if you think about it, I mean, Yes, that makes total sense. Yep. I, the reason why I don't have is because I don't know. Like Elon knows stuff that we don't know. That's why he's got stuff that we don't have. Can you imagine what he knows that we don't know? You, you know? Like yeah. there's everybody in life is like that. And so I realized I didn't know what I didn't know about this. So I just had to figure it out. So I got my I got my license. I got two or three carriers. I okay. figured I don't need 20. I just need two or three. Talk through that real quick. Because he's dropping nugget after nugget just randomly in stories. A lot of agents that come in and they're like, I, got, I need everything. I got everything. You know? No, I, I, I knew the market was very simple. I knew if I focused on one niche market first, I could expand later. I wasn't trying to be everything to all people all at once. Because yeah. that's dilution and it's hard for you to focus and get any traction. It does provide a lot of like, yeah, it just, it, it, it does hold you back. For someone like me, you know, I've got a little attention deficit disorder here going on. Yeah. Right, really, right. But when I dial in, I can really get focused. And um, so like too many things coming at me at one time uh, actually, it, you know, uh, holds me back. But if I can, if I can dial in and run in a certain direction, like I can, yes. have, I can have good success. And so I realized I only needed two or three good carriers that covered most of the health impairments for seniors. Um, and I needed leads. Mm. The rest I figured out. True. So I dropped like $2,400 and I started, a, I did some mail okay. uh, on these same pink mailers that said supplement your government benefit of $255. You know, the government yeah. only pays $255. You can now supplement your government benefit, you Wait. know, with state regulated final expense programs to help cover the cost of funeral, blah, blah, blah. For more information, fill out the card, send it back and we'll rush the information to you. Something like that. Yep. Why didn't you try yellow? <laughs> I don't know, because I followed suit, man. I followed Fred suit. did pink. They did pink. That's what I did. I, I wasn't Good. trying to reinvent the wheel. I was Good. just going with it, you know? So yeah. so I dropped some mail, and then they said, well, this is mail. Like, it's going to take three to four weeks to get this back. And I'm like, well, what the freak do I do in the meantime? Like, can I get my hands? Like, are there any other? And they said, well, we got some aged leads that you can get. And I was like, great. Give me those. Like, I'll take whatever. Like I just want to practice. <laughs> I just want to practice. Yeah. I just want to practice. I said, we got 50 leads. The guy literally charged me like 200 bucks for 50 leads that were age leads. I didn't know how old they were or nothing. All I knew is I got a stack of 50 and I printed them all off one on a sheet and put them in a manila folder. Didn't even look at them. Nice. They were two and a half hours away in a county down in the, in, in the south of Kentucky, McCreary County, Kentucky. And now I was still a partner in my other company, in yeah. the Yellow Pages business. And I took a, some time off and I took a week off and I drove down on a Monday morning and got down that market and they had one little hotel there. The other one burnt down, they never built it back. And I checked into this hotel and then I pull out the leads, I put them on my beds first time I looked at them. And I looked at every lead and there was not, there was only phone numbers on maybe 40% of them. The other 60% the other didn't have a phone number and there were no street addresses on any of them. They were all PO box leads, every one of them. There was no street addresses. No street addresses. So here's, here's what I found out, I realized shortly after this. They never did sell those leads to anyone because the people ordering those leads probably excluded PO boxes. And those were ones that came in and they just put them over in a oh. discard pile and they sold them to Sap <laughs> Roger here for 200 bucks, 50 of these leads. There was not one street address on them, dude. And you None. were two and a half hours from home. Yep. And you went before you noticed. I didn't even, yeah, I was just going. I freaking love that. Go first, figure it out, the, figure it out the rest yes. after, right? Take action, figure out the rest oh as you go. God. So. I was like, okay, how do I figure this out? Well, I realized that there's all these little small towns in this county. So I went to the post office. The post office is like half the size of your studio. <laughs> there's one person there with like like 82 mailboxes behind him. That's it. <laughs> so Jeez, I walk in. Please. Hey, Bill, my name's Roger. I had a little thing around my neck with my name on it. Like Mr. Williamson here had filled out this request for some information, but he didn't have his phone number on here. And all I've got is a PO box, but he signed it. And I'm supposed to get this information to him. Well, I'm not really supposed to tell you, you know, where they're at. And I'm like, you see him in here, right? Yeah, he comes in every day. I'm like, I got two options, Bill. I can sit here and wait for him to come in. And when he comes in, you can point. <laughs> and that's going to take a lot of my time. And we're, gonna, we're probably going to run out of stuff to talk about. Or you can just give me some directions to where he is and I'll stop by and take care of it right away. Yeah. I've got a bunch of these people, by the way. Do you know this person? Do you know this person? Well, I built a little rapport. Next thing, this guy's giving me addresses and directions. 
And literally that's how I got through that, oh, that, that batch of leads. Gosh. And I went to like five different little post offices over six days. I ended up selling like $5,300 in six days off two-year-old leads that were P.O. Box only. Without addresses. Without addresses, yeah. Oh With two carriers. Gosh. Yeah. First policy I wrote, I remember exactly where I sat, helped them out. The little policy was like $40 and change a month. And it got issued. I got paid. I was like, this is perfect. And then that's like 10 days awesome. later, he canceled it. And like a week later, I got a charge back. <laughs> well, that's not awesome. <laughs> no. But anyway, that, that's, that's how it started out. Wow. Yeah. And I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm listening. And I'm thinking about the audience that is listening to this. Um, put yourself in Roger's shoes. Okay. You spend 200 bucks. You drive two and a half hours. You get there. You have 50 leads and they don't have addresses. And you've got to go convince some random freaking post office worker who would never normally do this to give you directions and addresses to all these people. What would you do? <laughs> most yeah. people, dude, most people would have went home. Those people well, would have tried well, to call the people they could. Most people would not have went to the post office. Okay, you can act like they would. They wouldn't. Okay, maybe y'all would. I freaking hope you would. I don't know that I would have. I saw the bagels. Correct. I saw the bagels. Um, what you got to realize too is like, I didn't normally dress in khakis and a polo. Like I was suited up. I was seeing business owners. I was asking them for 50, 80, $100,000 at a time mm. for advertising with our company. Like this was my normal business protocol and I had preset appointments and here I am completely out of my element, <laughs> you know, oh you know, and I'm getting addresses. It's on snake lick road, go past the tree that got hit by lightning. The top of it's gone, but you'll see it. If you go to the next driveway after that and turn in, you'll see a house drive up past the house. It's the trailer up there behind it. Like that's how I started. But I could, I could see the bigger picture behind that. I knew that was the yeah. start and I had to start somewhere. So I just jumped in and started figuring it out. There's no other way to start anything. You just got to jump in and figure it stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. And you did. Yeah. So 5,300 bucks first week. No, no. I spread that. I, I only had two and a half days each week to go because I, I had my other job. I mean, I was still, I was still working. And so, but I snuck away. And so I went, I went two weeks in a row. I did two and a half days each time. Cool. And I did like five days or so, uh, a, a full week. But yeah. um, I did like 2,800 the first week and I did uh, like 2,600 or something like the second week. What'd you think after that? Well, my wife said, what is this going to work? I said, not at the production level I'm getting now. I said, but <laughs> not I, without address. I said, but I am very highly encouraged. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, here's what I know. These leads were two years old. I had to struggle to find them, but there was people there that needed me. There was people there that needed what we do. If I can turn this into where I'm getting regular consistent leads and I have a system and I can actually do this full time where I'm not distracted and doing anything else. Yeah. It's, you can very easily make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, three to four days a week. Oh my gosh. Very easily do that. Yeah. And she said, Are, do you think, you think this is a good decision for us? I said, I'm still testing it. And so I, you know, I kept playing around with it and it was mm -hmm. several months later when I finally submitted a letter to my partners and that I was leaving our own company and wow. to, to, to chase another dream. Yeah. What'd they think about that? Uh, they didn't like it. They didn't like it. It was at the time of the recession too. It was like right yeah. around 2010. We were two years into that first mortgage market crash back in 2008. I could see the writing on the wall. Um, I, I wanted to do something different. Yeah. The culture of our company changed. We, we brought on a private equity group and they started taking the company in a direction that I didn't really agree with. And so I was, I was ready for a change. Mm. I couldn't get any equity out. So I started with just, you know, I, I wasn't able to take my equity out for like two years later. Wow. Uh, three years later, actually, before I was able to get my equity out of that company. Jeez. So I started just like anyone else, like nervous, trying to figure it out. But I could see the bagels, man. Let's go. Yeah. And then what happened after that? It kept going. Uh, kept going. Um, and then I started to tell the story about what I was doing. I got on a regular lead flow. Production went up. So from January then till as we were running the next year, I remember Forrester's Financial had this trip that they were. They do a sales incentive trip every. Uh, they you were. You just went. Yeah, I was just in Punta Mita. Just got back yeah, from, from yeah. theirs. Punta Mita at the Four Seasons with Foresters. So awesome. With uh, Darren Stubbs, one of your other recent yeah. uh, podcast guests and yep. speaker at the 8% Virtual. Yeah, Blythe, I keep running Cole, into Darren all over the place. Darren, yeah. David, a yeah. bunch of people, man. And uh, we were there, um, but Foresters, I didn't even know who they were at the time, but they were offering a trip to Fiji. And I told my wife, we're going to Fiji on this trip. So I was running hard. and uh, You told her before? Yeah. At the beginning of the year, we're going to Fiji. 
Love that too, by the way. She said, okay, let's go. He put it out there. He made it public. He yeah. told somebody. He yeah. put some pressure on himself. I was trying to figure out a way to, to grow and scale a business. Yeah. And so I kept talking to the company that I was with, and they 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 just saw me as a sales guy. They, they never knew me. They were in Dallas. I never went down there. They never invited me down, and I uh, never got to meet anybody. And so I made some cha- I made some decisions to make some changes because I needed different contracts. I wanted to get on a different lead program. I was looking for an opportunity to, to hire and, and grow a business. And when I let them know I was leaving, then they invited me down. Well, come down, you know, we'll go golfing and we'll have some steak, <laughs> you know, all this stuff. Yeah. It's funny because I ran into the former president of that company in Paris last year at the Mutual of Omaha Circle of Excellence trip, and we talked about that story. Oh my gosh. And I said, yeah, I'm the guy who was calling you, trying to figure out a way forward, and you didn't have a way forward at the time. And he goes, I know. And he goes, I didn't even know what, I didn't even know your background or who you were. I said, man, none of us wow. really know, really do we, who we're, who we're talking to, but there's opportunity inside of everyone. I said, I, I found my way forward. He goes, clearly, even on these trips now, and that's a that's carry, awesome. that's a, a an IMO trip, you know. Mm. And uh, he was there. He's he's working with another group now. He sold his business, but I was just trying to find a way forward, and I couldn't find a way forward there, and so I was yeah. I was going to leave. And uh, I remember it being the third week of May, and I had uh, I had written uh, one hundred thirty seven thousand four hundred dollars in in production. This was your first, my first four and a half months in the business. Wow! And I had Foresters, American Amicable, United Home Life, and a little. Uh, uh, guaranteed issue company called presidential life that's now gone out of business mm. that was the four life. carries i had so I, I was putting a lot of production with foresters yep and i was uh getting ready to transition and i let them know i was ready to go and they were like well um and then the one guy that I was working with said well i'm not going to release you i was like are you kidding me like i didn't know what that was didn't understand that and so um yeah and then a lot of agents are they, they, mm-hmm. they have to learn a lot of that on their own like people aren't sitting them down in like a class saying hey Here's what to look for. Here's what to yeah. ask. Here's what to understand. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know that in the, in the group that I was in, there was basically, I was capped out. I could only go so far with my with my contract levels because of how the structure was set. Yeah. There was no way forward for me to improve my compensation so I could continue to hire and grow a company. Because you were... I was layered out. Yeah, you were limited by the person above you. I was layered yeah. out, and there was no way beyond that. I mean, there was two guys in that group somewhere, and I, they just kept telling me they liked to fish a lot. I never saw them, but they were making overrides on me. They never brought me any value, and I didn't know who they were. But there was no way for me to, to do anything to change that. And I said, well, yeah. I guess I'm going to have to make a lateral move. And so I did make a lateral move, um, and uh, we started to grow our business. And then we started to hire and recruit, and uh, we, we hit the ground running with a couple of other carriers. And it was off to the races. And then it was, you know, trying to streamline that process. And, uh, and you know, you go through bumps and bruises along the way and things like COVID happen and, True. you know, years later, but there was all kinds of other things that happened along the way. But we introduced mortgage protection, final expense. Then we introduced retirement protection with annuities. And yes. of course now with Impact Legacy Group, you know, now we have the platform with That's right. all the major verticals for Medicare is blowing up. That's huge huge market yes, for is. us it's insane uh, mortgage protection um, final expense is still a very big part of what we do yep. a lot of that's now uh, mortgage protection and finance, but a lot of that's now being done um, virtually or over the phone They're I was gonna even, ask about that yeah I mean there was a big transition through COVID and so a lot of people are doing that over the phone um, we've even had a transition away from zoom to just the phone uh, for a lot of uh, those types of mortgage protection wow. sales wow. Um, and uh, in addition to that, there's mortgage protection, uh, there's a, a tax-free retirement planning using IULs, there's yep. infinite banking concepts with whole life strategies. I mean, it's, it's a, it, the opportunity is endless. So I could see that out there in the distance. When I started, I knew I had to start in yes. one spot and eventually I would get there. And so here I am now in my 50s, as you uh, indicated <laughs> earlier. And uh, I've, you said it I, first. I've been in the business 54. I've been in the okay. business now Let's for um, since uh, really since 2014. I started uh, Advanced Team, which is my first company. It's about nine years. And now with Impact Legacy Group, uh, nine years in, and it's been a phenomenal ride, man. And I now it. I feel like we're sitting at the beginning yeah. of the biggest opportunity ever no in, doubt about in it. insurance. Yeah. And I'm just excited about where we're going. I feel like I'm starting brand new just because of the the team that we have with us now and the support that we're able to bring to agents around the country. And so the dream that I had, literally the dream that I had when I, yeah. when I looked at this back in 2011 for the first time when I was dabbling and, and trying to step in is now, you know, coming to fruition. So I would say that nothing comes quick, nothing comes easy. There's always going to be challenges, but if you keep your eye on the big, the, the big thing, 
you'll figure out a way forward. True. Your brain, uh, our, our brains are wired to survive. They're mm -hmm. not wired to thrive, right? Your brain is, totally. every day, your brain says, stay alive. And yes. it does everything to stay alive, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you start working out and your brain says, hold on to the fat because you're going to need it because you're working out. Like, so the very things that we're trying to do to, right? But you got to get, you got to teach your, your body that yes. I'm going to condition my body. So the pains that you go through initially eventually go away totally. and then you get into another state, right? So the, the body wants to stay in this place of comfort. Your brain wants to stay in this place of comfort. You got to teach yourself to see the, to see the bagels instead of seeing the line. That's right. And uh, if we can do that, like doors open up and yeah. relationships open up. And so I've been appreciative of my relationship with you, of course, and, Likewise. and all the networking and the great people I've met across the industry. It's been a phenomenal ride. It's been crazy. We've yeah. done a lot together. It's been awesome. Um, yeah. You also were, you were sell you were obviously selling for years. Mm -hmm. um, wh wh where did the Life Insurance Academy come from? Where was the idea there? Because that's been a big, a big hit. Like for if you haven't checked that out or listened, like they're getting a crazy amount of listens right now. I'm talking like nearly, it won't be long and they'll have a hundred thousand agents a month listening, you know, like that's nuts. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's, uh, it's I would say, I would say between our, our channel and your podcast, they're probably the two most reaching media sources in the industry right now. Well, I'm honored that you would put me in the right? classification with your channel. Dude, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I love this, right? We were yeah. sharing this because I, you had YouTube content forever. Yes. And I was sharing with you some of the numbers and the reach and the podcast. And you're like, I think I'm going to actually start a regular podcast for audio as well. How do I do that? And literally like four days later, you released your first episode. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah. I'm doing this anyway. I might as well be putting the audio out. Correct. You know? Yeah. Correct. But um, that came from a desire to um, help people like me get started and be able to get information, you know, be able to open source information so they can make good decisions coming into the business. We knew long term it would be an inbound marketing source. Yes. But uh, a lot of the content we put out, we're profiling people from other groups, other organizations that are not even affiliated with us. Totally. Because we want to tell the story about the opportunity in this insurance and financial services business. I think it's the best kept secret in America. It is. It's a good one. And there's plenty of business to go around. And so we just wanted to feature people in the business. And what better way to learn the business than to interview top people in the business? Yep. So like it's yep. a little, it was a little selfish. I wanted sure. to be able to interview people. I wanted to be able to create a platform where people wanted to come and be featured and profiled. But it was also a way for me to attract people to us um, and totally. be able to put out very good content. And so yep. we started with the podcast and then we turned it into courses and training. And so it has its own entity. The Life Insurance Academy is its own entity. We do courses and coaching. People can subscribe to our platform monthly yep. to get courses. They can be on our coaching call every Thursday. Yeah, you, you were just on the coaching call a few minutes ago. Like yeah. you did it for an hour, a little over an hour just before we jumped on and did this. Yeah. He yeah. was doing his LIA coaching call every, every week. Every Thursday. And we have all kinds of people from all over the country. I mean, we've had people from multiple countries on our, our yeah, coaching call. one guy in Africa. South Africa. Yeah. 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 So yeah. people from all over jump in because they're trying to change their life. And, and if we got a way to help them, then fantastic. And they exactly. don't have to be a part of our organization mm -mm. i'm just happy to help um and so it's its own thing but the podcast man has blown up and then we hired a producer to, to youtube just a year ago and we took our subscribers to like from like 800 mm -hmm. to now we've got like 5600 subscribers we just crossed wow. over there uh, we just did 5,000 like three weeks ago and now we're at like 50 like it's growing rapidly the youtube channel but the audio podcast spotify apple um you know it, I, I think we're I don't know how many uh, platforms that we're on now, like There's Stitcher, Podbean, Overcast Radio. See, I don't even know uh, what any of those are. Alexa. Yeah, I mean, there's Amazon, there's Pandora Radio, like all of these. Um, that's, I mean, we're we're going to all of those. I mean, we were getting no listens for the first five or six months. We started in January of 2020. Uh, but in May of 2020, when everyone was locked in, our, our listens started to go up. And... Um, we just saw it continue to go, continue to go, continue to go. And it was like this past month, I just shared with you some numbers. Yeah. Uh, we had 61,000 unique downloads in February, shortest month of the year. 61,000 unique downloads of the podcast in February. Now, insane. some of those might be the same agent listening to four podcasts over the course of a month. Sure. I, I recognize that. But sure. I mean, the, the, the traffic is, is on a Northeast trajectory, you know? It is. And so it's really cool to see that. And um, 
we've now been able to bring in guests that have been listening for a year and they tell us that our, our, our podcast has helped change their business, helped change the trajectory of their business. So that's a part of the wanting to give back to the industry mm -hmm. and, and tell people about the best kept secret in America. That's right, man. It's awesome you do it. Yeah. Um, well, we could talk forever. Um, yeah. I wish I didn't have to get to a meeting because I would just keep hanging out and talking because this, 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 this has been amazing. Um, someone wanted to learn more about you, reach out and talk to you in anything you're doing. How would they go about doing that? Where would you like to send them? Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, yep. You're going to find two accounts on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> One got busted and uh, yes. because of two-factor authentication will not let me back in. But you can find me at Facebook at Roger D. Short. D Roger. is for Dale. It's my middle name, Roger D. Short. Short. You can find me on Instagram at Roger Short. Uh, LinkedIn, Roger Short. Um, you can reach out through uh, roger.short at impactlegacygroup.com. You can reach me at roger at lifeinsuranceacademy.org. Or you can send, you know, a pigeon with a note. That's right. You can probably do that too. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. So. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Dude, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for being a part of 8% Virtual, which is tomorrow, by the way, that we're yeah. going to be hanging out on. Excited um, to be here for it. Appreciate you being here. It's been a blast. Love doing stuff with you. We're going to continue to do that for a very long time. And thanks for being on. Actually, first time solo. Yeah. So thank you for being on the Power Player Podcast. If, if you guys are not watching the virtual jump on but if if you're not already got your ticket for the eight percent conference in july in dallas that's right get your ticket that is a game-changing event that is a game-changing event we went to check it out tentatively for the first time and uh we walked away and i looked at my team and i said we could have invited every agent we knew and they would have left here better Mm. they would have left here more inspired with more vision with more tools and resources to win that's regardless cool. of who they're with Cody, I love what you're doing for the industry. Thanks, you're bringing bro. all kinds of groups and people together. You're one of the biggest collaborators and networks in the space. You're very diplomatic. You always care about people. Um, and uh, you always try to bring value. And uh, it's, it's the one thing that I can say is your strongest gift is networking and bringing people together and sharing ideas. And you've created a stage and a platform with 8% that very few uh, have ever done. And mm -hmm. I think it's a movement that's going to, uh, will be spoken about for generations. I mean, you, you're doing something impactful. So you saw the bagels, man. Let's give me some goosebumps, dude. You saw the bagels. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for all the all kind right. words. Thanks for hanging out yeah. in Springfield, Missouri. Thanks for listening. Thank you guys for listening to the Power Player Podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode. Adios.